In this video, we're going to go over five amendment questions for GD social studies. We're going to start with the First Amendment. These protesters are exercising all of these First Amendment rights except which one? But we could find the answer just by looking at the details of the photo they give us here. So the protesters are doing all of these things except which one? Let's see. The first one, freedom of speech. Well, when you think of speech, you might think of things that are said out loud. That would be verbal speech. But it could also be written as well. And a lot of them have these written phrases. So the protesters, they are exercising freedom of speech in a written form here. So the first one, this does apply. Okay, what about the next one? Freedom of the press. The press is things like newspapers, magazines, TV news. Those are all part of media or the press. Are any of these involved here? Well, it doesn't look like because there's no newspapers, there's no cameras, nobody's being interviewed, so it doesn't look like the press is involved. So the second one doesn't look like it applies. What about the third one? The right to peaceably assemble. To assemble is to gather, and they are gathered together peacefully. Nobody's being violent, they're just holding up these signs. So again, it does seem like they're peaceably assembled or gathered here. So this one does apply. And the last one, the right to petition the government. And to petition is to ask for something. So are they asking the government for something? But again, the details gave it away. Because this sign right here, we demand the right to vote. Sounds like they're asking the government to give them the right to vote. And it looks like a government building behind them. Definitely looks like they're petitioning the government or asking the government for something. So this one applies as well. But the only one that didn't, there was no press involved, no publications or journalism. So that's why this one did not apply here. Okay, let's look at another question. Here's another question about the First Amendment. Often they'll give you a little excerpt like this part here, and then ask you a question about it. Which event shows a violation of the First Amendment? Violation means something that goes against the First Amendment. Okay, let's go ahead and read it and find out. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That means there should not be a law establishing one religion, like Christianity, or prohibiting the free exercise of other religions. Okay, let's keep going. Or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. Let's pause there. Well, we've already looked at this. Abridging means limiting. There should be no law that limits the freedom of speech or of the press. And we already know what that is from the previous question, the media. Okay, or the right of people to peacefully assemble. We've seen this before as well. And finally, to petition the government to ask the government for a redress of grievances. A grievance is something you have a problem with. All right, now all of these are protected in the First Amendment. But which of these is a violation? Let's check it out. The first one. A religious service is held in a rented community center. Are you allowed to do this? Well, you are allowed to hold a religious service, and if it's in a rented community center, that's actually fine, as long as they let other religions use that space as well. So, freedom to practice your religion, this is protected, so this one's fine here. The next one. People attend a public meeting to share concerns with city leaders. Attending a public meeting sounds like people peacefully assembling. Doesn't sound like anything wrong with that one either. So the second one is protected as well. The third one, police stop a peaceful protest because it criticizes the government. Now, if there's a peaceful protest going on, that's fine. But a problem is if police stop a peaceful protest. This is a violation or it goes against the First Amendment. So this should not be allowed to happen, and this one is the correct option here. Because the last one, a newspaper publishes an opinion article critical of Congress. 
is a newspaper allowed to publish an opinion? Well, actually, most newspapers even have an opinion section, and that is protected. It's protected under freedom of the press here. So the last one, this is protected, it's not a violation. But like we said, police are not allowed to stop a peaceful protest. That is a violation. Because criticizing the government, this is also protected. They might just be petitioning or asking the government to do something, and that's totally fine as well. So hopefully you feel better with the First Amendment. Let's go ahead and move on to the Second Amendment now. Once again, they give a little excerpt from the Second Amendment. Let's go ahead and read it here. The Second Amendment, ratified in 1791, states, A well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So, these are really hard to read for the most part, but just try to find certain phrases. For this one, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. What does this mean? Well, arms is actually firearms. They're talking about guns. Therefore, it is the right of the people to keep firearms or guns. They say that that right shall not be infringed. And infringed means that right should not be disregarded. The question is, which shows an opinion about the Second Amendment? And because the Second Amendment is about the right to bear arms or have a gun, basically the question is, which of these is an opinion about gun rights? Okay, the first one. The Second Amendment was written over 200 years ago. But they tell us at the top that this was ratified in 1791. And ratified means approved or passed. Was this over 200 years ago? Well, it's 2025 now. If we subtract 200, we get to 1825. And we would have to go further back to get here. Therefore, it was over 200 years ago. Sounds like a fact. It's not an opinion. So that's not it. The next one. The Second Amendment protects individual gun rights. Well, let's look at that. It does seem to protect individuals the right to have a gun. So that just sounds like a fact of what it's all about. It doesn't sound like an opinion or a personal belief. So that's not it either. The third one. The Second Amendment endorses weak regulation of guns. Let's look at this more closely. When you have a word like weak, when somebody says there's weak regulation, that might be their personal belief or their opinion. Somebody else might think that it endorses strong regulation of guns. So when you call something weak or strong, that's a personal belief. Just like if you were to call something good or bad. All of that points to an opinion going on. So see, this is definitely the personal belief or an opinion here. Because the last one, the Second Amendment has been debated for years. Again, that just sounds like it could be true, could be a fact. But it's not based on a political belief of calling something weak or strong like the third one did here. And by the way, I have a video on opinions and bias if you want some more practice with those. Okay, let's move to another amendment. This time we're looking at the Fourth Amendment. The question is, which illustrates a breach, that means a violation, of Fourth Amendment rights? So what rights are protected in this amendment? The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. Again, a lot going on, really hard to interpret, but a key phrase seems to be the right of the people against unreasonable searches. And then seizures is when the police take something away from you. So they seize it, in other words. But notice, it's the right of the people against unreasonable searches. So which of the answers down below sounds like an unreasonable search? That's going to be a breach or a violation here. The first one, TSA screens bags at the airport before boarding. Now, screening bags happens all the time. So it's probably not a breach or a violation because it's for the safety of the people at the airport before you board to make sure that bags don't have anything dangerous in them. 
So that doesn't sound like a breach or a violation of your rights. So the first one, that actually seems okay so far. The next one, security personnel conduct bag checks at a stadium. Once again, we've got bag checks going on to make sure people don't bring in guns or dangerous things. So also it doesn't sound like a breach or a violation as well. Sounds pretty reasonable actually. So the second one, that's okay too. The third one, police enter a home without a warrant or consent. But police are not able to enter a home without a warrant. That's a legal document that allows them to search a house. So without a warrant, then that would be unreasonable to just come into your house and start looking through your stuff for no reason. So this is a breach or a violation of your rights. So see, this is the correct option here. But let's see the last one. An employer regularly monitors employee emails. Is this a violation of your rights? But a company is able to monitor employee emails, so this is not a violation. It's within their right to make sure that you're not doing anything illegal, so they can check your emails just to make sure that's not happening. But that's what the Fourth Amendment's all about. It protects you from unreasonable searches, like the police entering your home without a warrant, or searching your car without any cause whatsoever. And just one last one here. Here we have the Fifth Amendment. Which example best illustrates the protections of the Fifth Amendment? Let's read it and find out. No person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor to be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Let's try to summarize. No person shall be a witness against himself. Well, what does that mean? Well, when you witness a crime, that's what they're talking about. But you're not supposed to be compelled to be a witness against yourself. In other words, you're not supposed to make yourself look guilty of a crime. So that's a protection of the Fifth Amendment here. It's a little hard to understand, but once we see which option fits, then it'll definitely click into place here. So which is a protection of the Fifth Amendment? The first one? Police search a home without a warrant. Now you are protected from police searching your home without a warrant, but it's not part of this amendment. Remember, that was a part of the Fourth Amendment. That was an unreasonable search and seizure. So this one's protected under the Fourth, not the Fifth Amendment here. Okay, let's get rid of that. The next one, a person is jailed after committing a felony. A felony is a pretty serious crime. So if somebody commits a felony, they could go to jail. That's fine, but that doesn't seem to be what they're talking about here at all. That doesn't sound like a witness against yourself or making yourself look guilty. So let's keep looking. The third one, a defendant is provided with a public attorney. A public attorney is a lawyer. Now, they also don't mention anything about having a lawyer here. So it's possible you may need an attorney or a lawyer so you don't make yourself look guilty. That's definitely an option here. But let's look at the last one. A suspect remains silent to avoid self-incrimination. But everybody does have the right to remain silent if you're being interviewed or a suspect. And that is to avoid self-incrimination or to make yourself look guilty of a crime. That seems to match exactly what they're talking about up here. No person shall be compelled or pressured to be a witness against themselves, or to make yourself look guilty by saying something. You might admit to being at a crime scene even if you didn't do anything. So by remaining silent, that can help you avoid making yourself look guilty of a certain crime going on. And finally, this is called pleading the fifth. The right to remain silent, the cops tell you when they arrest you that you do have the right to remain silent. Or if you're being interviewed by the police or in court, you can plead the fifth, remain silent, so you don't make yourself look guilty here. And of course, it's called the fifth because it's the Fifth Amendment. So that's what this one's all about here. Check out my website for practice problems just like these and others as well. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want me to cover. 
Good luck. You got these. We'll see you in the next video. Doodles.